When you run a Cochrane's Q test, the default display is quite minimal. However, it can be expanded to provide much more detail. Before that though, let's work through this hypothesis test summary. So first we can see that a Cochrane's Q test was run and that the null hypothesis for this test was that the distribution of TV news, newspaper, news website and news radio are all the same. So in other words, the different types of media are all consumed by the same number of people. They're all equally popular. Now we're in a position where we can reject this null hypothesis because the significance level for the Q test is less than alpha, which has been set at 0.05 by default. Now if you double click the summary table, it will open up the model viewer. Now the table towards the bottom of the first screen tells you that there were 16 cases in the sample and that Cochrane's Q test statistic is 8.020. We'll need this for the reporting. We'll also need the degrees of freedom, which is 3, and you already know the significance level of 0.046. Now in the graph above this table, you can see the proportion of people who did and did not consume each type of media in the 24 hours prior to being polled. Now for some reason, which is unclear to me, SPSS reverses the response categories in this graph. So green indicates the proportion of people who did not consume each type of media, rather than the people who did, as suggested in the legend. Looking at this graph, it appears as though TV news was consumed to a greater extent than the other three types of media. However, we will need to look at the pairwise comparisons before concluding that, for example, a significantly greater number of people watch TV news than listen to radio news. Before we get to that though, I just want to confirm for you that the majority of the sample did watch TV news and did not listen to radio news, rather than the reverse, which is what this graph suggests. So in the View drop-down menu, I'm going to choose Categorical Field Information. So here I can see that about two-thirds of the sample watch TV news, and only about a quarter of the sample listen to radio news. Now in the view menu again, select pairwise comparisons. And I'll just scroll down the page. And in this table, there's basically six McNamara tests reported. Each one is comparing just two levels of the independent variable. So for example, the first is comparing the proportions of people who did and did not consume news radio with the proportions of people who did and did not read news websites. And that comparison is non-significant. In fact, all of these comparisons are non-significant except for the one between news radio and television news. And by the way, you should read and report the adjusted significance levels in the final column rather than the ones in the column to the left of that. And this is because they've been adjusted to ensure that our family-wise type 1 error rate remains at 0.05 even though we've conducted six comparisons. Now this is how you might write up these findings. So the Cochrane's Q-test was statistically significant, and follow-up pairwise comparisons indicated that a significantly greater proportion of the participants consumed TV news than radio news. However, all other comparisons were non-significant. It might also be useful to include a graph indicating the proportion or number of people in the sample who consumed each type of media.